iOS 26.1 just dropped. Here are seven best features you need to know. Along with what I think is the best change, how's the performance, how's the battery life, and the bugs I found. Let's go. The first one is the new gestures in the Apple Music app. In the Apple Music app, when you want to skip to the next song or go back to the previous one, you can now swipe left or right on the toolbar at the bottom. You'll see the title of the song slide as you swipe over it, along with a subtle bouncy animation when you touch it. When you tap into it and go full screen, you can swipe over the album art and it works the same way. I think it's a nice addition. It's one of those things which I didn't think I needed, but one that definitely adds to the overall experience of the app. I also think it's executed very well with the smooth animations and the natural gestures. All right, on to the next one, the new design for alarms and timers. When your alarm goes off or your timer ends, you'll notice that the stop button is now a slider. If it's a timer, you'll have a repeat button with the slider. And if it's an alarm, you'll have a snooze button. And instead of tapping on a button, you can slide from left to right to stop it. I think it's a pointless change. I mean, it looks pretty with the orange light reflecting on it and a liquid glass animation when you slide it, but I'm not sure if it's any better in terms of actual usability. I think Apple just wanted to show off their new design here. Okay, next is the new video scrubber in the Photos app. When you're playing a video in the Photos app, you'll see that the scrubber has a new design. It's not as transparent as other liquid glass elements. It's a bit more frosted and opaque. You can tap and hold onto it. It becomes a little bigger and shows the timeline and you can scrub forward and backward as usual. I think it looks modern and works well, but I also think it would look even better if it was more transparent and liquidy. All right, before we move on to the next one, I just want to share how the performance has been on iOS 26.1. So I've been on iOS 26 since developer beta one, and the trend I've noticed is that with each update, the performance just kept getting better and better. And on iOS 26.1, which is the latest version, the same holds true. Performance is great. It's snappy and smooth overall. I don't have any problems with it. All right, on to the next one, the new liquid glass toggle. If you go into the display and brightness settings, you can see a new option called liquid glass. You can tap into it and you'll see two options, clear and tinted. These basically give you the option to increase or reduce the transparency of liquid glass throughout the system. Clear is more transparent and tinted is more opaque. You can tap them and see it change on the preview above. I think this right here is a very non-Apple thing to do. I mean, whenever Apple does something, they take their time and give us something truly great. And whatever the initial response, they keep it. And eventually people start digging it. But with this toggle, it kind of gives off the vibe that they're doubting their own decision. I understand it's great for people who don't like the new design, but giving us the option to do so is a very non-Apple thing to do. All right, the next one is the liquid glass on the phone app. In the phone app, when you go into the keypad, you can see that the number buttons have a slightly new design. They look more glassy. And when you tap on them, they have this cute bouncy animation. If you drag them around, I don't know why you would do that, you'll see them getting stretched just like the control center toggles. But sadly, the call button doesn't do that. I think this is a very Apple thing to do. I like it, it makes it more fun to use. It's one of those things that you don't really pay attention to, but miss the second you pick up an Android phone. All right, the next one is bouncier animations. As you use your iPhone, if you look closely, you'll notice that everything is a bit more bouncy and stretchy, like the control center, opening and closing apps, scrolling, and basically anywhere there are animations. It feels like the animations are held for just a bit longer than before. I like where they're going with this, make everything liquidy and not static. It just adds more satisfaction while using the phone. Now, before I move on to the last one, I just want to let you know that battery life is meh. It's not that great, to be honest. I have to charge my phone at least twice a day. It also heats up more than I would like it to. It's not terrible, but it's not great either. All right, the seventh best feature in iOS 26.1 is the new toggle to disable camera on the lock screen. So if you go into the camera settings at the bottom, you'll see a new toggle that says lock screen swipe to open camera. It basically toggles the swipe to open camera gesture on the lock screen. I don't know why they added this. It's always been like that. It's handy and I like it. I don't think there's any reason to turn this off. Maybe it's because you already have an on screen and a physical camera button now. Maybe three ways to do the same thing is too much for Apple. But yeah, you have the option now. All right, time for my favorite one now. It is the bounciness. I love it. It's such a tiny thing, but it makes everything more satisfying to use. It's so much fun. If you share the same vibe, subscribe to my channel and watch this video next to check out more features for your iPhone. Peace.